boxes. These days, we all get put in them. I'm an atheist who believes in evolutionary science, so this is the box I'm put in. We are told that religious belief is incompatible with evolutionary science. We are supposed to be adversaries, so people with faith are put in a different box to me. This is what I describe as a clash narrative. Clash narratives are everywhere, and they're doing the world no good. The clash narrative between evolution and religion makes life difficult for people with religious beliefs who want to have a career in science. They've been put into boxes that make them less likely to be taken seriously by their colleagues and peers. This clash narrative means their religious beliefs are seen as an impediment to rational thought and committed scientific inquiry. That's not the only problem with these clashes. These narratives can be co-opted into broader social conflicts to suit various political agendas. For example, the clash narrative of evolution versus religion can be used to further the idea that scientific inquiry automatically leads to the secularization of society and it adds weight to the radical secular narrative that pitches all religion, particularly Islam, as a threat to modern liberal values. We all know the harm that these polarizations are doing to the world. But what if this controversy between religion and evolutionary science has been fabricated? Before our project, there was little empirical evidence to either support or contradict this deeply embedded clash narrative. My team and I decided to address this factual vacuum. We conducted extensive social research, historical and media analysis, and experimental psychology in eight countries. It revealed the truth about the boxes we put ourselves in. The clash narrative between evolution and religion is in part a cultural myth, with little basis in the reality of our day-to-day -day lives. We learned that the positions we take are more to do with social identities than actual doctrinal differences. Some non-believers unthinkingly adopt evolutionary science as part of their atheist identity, and some, with religious beliefs, reject evolutionary science because they see it as an atheist idea that conflicts with their religious identity. The truth is, most people with religious or spiritual beliefs accept the idea of evolutionary science. In fact, far more people expect religious believers to have issues with evolutionary science than the number of people who actually do. Our research also suggests that if someone does reject some aspects of evolutionary science, it does not equate to a rejection of science in general. Overall, the research paints a much more nuanced picture than the extreme polarity of a clash narrative. We have proven that people can exist in all different sorts of boxes, and this clash narrative is doing a disservice to everyone. It's doing a disservice to religious people who embrace scientific thinking and who have faced unfair and unjustified discrimination within the scientific community that's harmed their careers and lives. And science is also suffering, as a large proportion of the world's population feel deterred from engaging with it. Our findings provide verifiable evidence to refute stereotypes and counter prejudice, and is already creating a more enlightened attitude between science and religion. They have also spawned an international research network that is now studying science and belief in society and culture in a much broader and deeper way than the scope of the original project. Our learnings could also be more broadly applied to the polarisation and clash narratives existing in culture and politics. This work can influence and shape the sort of society we wish to live in. Instead of a world riven with division and hatred, we can live in one where we respect the nuances of our beliefs and disagree agreeably. We can step out of our boxes and live in harmony. And wouldn't that be a much healthier narrative? <laughs>